We still in the upside down. <laughs> what is the upside down? It is when the children of God have a revelation and understanding that they have been called to really turn things right side up. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That means when the world at large, the kingdoms of this world look at what we're doing, they will say things like they're turning everything upside down. When we obliterate the lie of religion. First, first of all, do we have any first-time visitors? If you're here for the first time, raise your hands out. Come on, give it up for our, our, Praise God. Give it up for those gentlemen right there. We have a couple here. Come on, love on them real good. Oh, we have some back there. Come on, give it up for the first-time visitor. My brother right here, welcome, man. Praise God. The reason I ask that is because <laughs> you might be hearing what I'm saying, and you're like, what in the world did this pastor just say? First of all, let me introduce you to who I am. <laughs> My name is Pastor Lonnie Brinson. I'm the pastor here at Redeeming Word. This community of believers is a community of believers that loves God and loves people. We have a revelation and understanding that God's love is his power. If it does not add up to love, we ain't about it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Everything that God does is because of love. Even when he corrects us, he does it because he loves us. And so here at Redeeming Word, we are all about loving God, loving people, and seeing lives changed by the power of God, which we know is the love of God. Amen? Now, we affectionately call ourselves religion rejects. Now, you may hear that and feel that that is being, you know... Uh, rebellious or something of that nature but the reality is uh, just to give you a little precursor and understanding is that religion has been created by man if i focus on religion i can be more concerned about religion and religion's rules and what i'll do is i'll forsake an actual relationship with god we reject religion a man-made set of rules a man-made denomination, a man-made organization, and we are all about having right relationship with God. Amen? So, all over this community of believers, say this with me, which you said it many times before. Say it again. Say, we reject, we reject religion. religion. Embrace, Embrace a right relationship with God. Amen? If I'm focused on religion, I can, be, I can be Mormon and be a Christian. I can be Catholic and be a Christian. I can be uh, 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 Jesus only, seven day. I can be on the uh, video music awards and sing about shaking it and dropping it low. And then when I get my award, I'm going to say, give it all honor and glory to God. Because I'm a Christian. Are, are, you, are you hearing what I'm saying? Everybody's a Christian. How many know Christians but don't walk the walk? So everyone's a Christian because that means they follow a set of rules or they follow the religion and identify with that religion. At Redeeming Word, I don't identify with any religion, but I want to follow Jesus to the day I die. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I want to walk like him. I want to talk like him. I ain't there yet, but I'm. I'm hoping I get there, amen? But how many believe that this walk is going to take me all the way to the day I meet him face to face, amen? And so we're on a walk with God. We're in a relationship with God. I am not in a religion. I'm in a relationship, amen? Imagine you and your wife looking at the way that you met. We're in covenant with each other, but the only reason we're together is because of the rules. Mm. Never thought about it like that. The only reason I don't cheat on her is because the rules say don't cheat. How many know that we are not in right relationship? How many would agree with that? 
If the only reason I'm doing these things is because I'm scared she'll divorce me or I'm scared of the punishment that I'll get or I don't want to go to divorce court or I'm one of those men that say it's cheaper to keep her. Huh? See, that's what we do, unfortunately, as it, when it comes to God. We have this mindset of, well, I don't want to go to hell. That's why I don't do it. How about you don't do it because you're in love with Jesus and your relationship with him is so intimate and so precious that you would not want to damage the relationship you have with him. So you walk the way he asks you to walk because of your relationship and the love that you share with each other. How many believe that's more powerful? See, love transforms. You remember when you met your wife, your girlfriend, when she told you to stop smoking and stop going out? You said, girl, we only been together for a week. I do what I want to do. I'm 28 years in. When my wife say, get up and go take out the trash, guess what? I do it. Because whatever she, we're in a right relationship. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I do sometimes what I don't want to do because of our relationship with each other. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm watching the game and she says, babe, can you get up and come get this? My wife is afraid of lizards, y'all. No, 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 no. You might be thinking you don't like lizards, but my wife is deathly afraid of lizards. And you know, in South Florida, you're going to get one or two lizards in your house, maybe two a month. But I keep telling her, if you, <laughs> it's the thing you fear that you bring upon yourself. <laughs> I ain't never seen this many lizards in anybody's house in my life. It seemed like it'd be like 15 lizards <laughs> in the last month in the house, just showing up out of every place. And boy, if you do not catch the lizard, <laughs> you in trouble. So here I am. <laughs> In my boxes, bent down, up under a couch, sprawled out, trying to get the lizard, and the game is on. But do you know why I go get the lizard? Because I'm in love with this little Puerto Rican girl right here. You know why I'm living a life with Christ? is because I'm in love with the lover of my soul and the lifter of my head. You know why I praise like I do? You know why I live the life I live? It ain't has nothing to do with me. It is an ex love exchange. I receive his grace and his mercy. He loved me so much. So why wouldn't I live for him? Oh, somebody say amen to that. So the key to life is understanding how much God loves you and uniting with God's spirit to do what he's called you to do. And those of us that are, raise your hand if you're a child of God. Those of you that say we are children of the most high God, then we should mimic and act like our daddy. How many agree with that? Amen. Amen. Uh, I want my children to have some of my characteristics. Amen. Maybe not all of them, but they should have some. And there's some that I wish they didn't have, but I want them to have some. If my son and my daughter start acting like the milkman, how many know something is wrong? <laughs> something ain't right. Milkman. Ain't even no milkman. First of all, that, that's what's wrong. <laughs> there is no milkman. <laughs> but if you start acting like the postman, start acting like somebody else, how many know there's, there's something wrong with that? And I think that's what happened to the body of Christ, the children of God, is we claim to be God's children, but we act like anything but. And we pride ourselves by using that title, I'm a Christian. Christ, Christ, I-A-N, little Jesus. How many of you know people that name the name of Christian, but they act nothing like Jesus? And then we use our ridicule and our finger pointing and our judgment as an excuse because people don't line up to our views of Christianity. And if they don't line up to what we say they are, then we can just talk about them, slander them, point fingers at them, judge it, and actually turn into God of their lives. Let me say that again. Without realizing it, we turn into the God of their lives. 
We have already damned them to hell, pointed fingers at them and told them they're not worthy of God's love. How many know there's something wrong with that? But I didn't come to preach that. If you think that's interesting, I encourage you to go back a couple series ago. Go to our YouTube page. We're on uh, YouTube at RWCCI TV and look up the series Religion Rejects. Amen. Say it again. Reject religion. Embrace a relationship with God. And the book is coming out soon. Amen. I said the book is coming out soon. Praise God. We've been talking about staying united in order for us to turn the world upside down. How many know that we have to be united? You need to be united in your families. You need to be united as a community of believers and the supreme art of war or the tactic of our enemy is to do what? Divide and say it with me. Divide and conquer every conqueror. Every predator knows you need to thin out, divide, separate, isolate the herd in order for you to be able to steal, kill, and destroy more effectively. So if I can get you by yourself, I have a better opportunity of destroying you. Ooh, I feel the spirit of God in this place. Somebody about to get set free. The enemy has, oh, Jesus, he has you in his sights. How many of you watch National Geographic? I really like National Geographic or any animal show. And I love big cats. I love like, you know what I mean? Predators. I love those types of animals. There's something amazing about them. When a jaguar, a leopard, a cheetah, a lion tiger has you in his sights how many know that joker zero in on you his entire body becomes a weapon and he is poised ready to pounce the enemy comes at you like a roaring lion he is seeking who he may do what devour it is easier to devour you, to steal from you, to kill you. Maybe he can't take your life, but he's killing your relationships. Maybe he has not had the right to take your life, but he's killing your finances, killing your self-esteem, killing your marriage, looking for the weakest link because his plan is to steal, kill, and destroy and he's trying to divide you from your wife, divide you from your sister, your brother, your children, so that he can destroy them. He's always looking for the weakest link. You know, a predator, he doesn't go after the strongest. That's not how, that doesn't make much sense. You ever seen a lion who made a mistake and went after the strongest wildebeest? Anybody ever seen that? All of a sudden, the lion, rawr, and then he's pew, up in the air because... Bro, you made a mistake. That's the wrong one. Have you ever seen a predator attack a herd and the entire herd begins to circle around him? And that lion, no matter who he is or how powerful he is, guess what? He realizes he just made a mistake. Oh. So what you're telling me is that the wildebeest is smarter than the body of Christ. I won't get ahead of myself. Psalms 133 and 1. How truly wonderful. This is the Passion Translation. It says, how truly wonderful it is and delightful. Excuse me. How truly wonderful and delightful it is to see brothers and sisters living together in sweet unity. Somebody say unity. unity. It is as precious as the sacred scented oil. Flowing from the head of the priest Aaron, dripping down upon his beard and running all the way down to the hem of his priestly robes. Hear that scented oil? That's an anointing oil. And so David, or the writer of this particular psalm, is saying that when we come together, it's a sweet smelling fragrance. And that sweet smelling fragrance is like a scented oil. 
And this oil is the oil that was used to anoint the head of the priests. Anointing oil. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So when we come together, it is like an oil, a salve. It is like, it is like the anointing itself being released to us. It's dripping down from the head all the way down to every single one of y'all. When we unite. Somebody say unity. Third verse. Listen. What's the subject of this passage of scripture? Unity. Say it again. Say unity. Unity. Say it again. Say unity. unity. What is the subject of this passage of scripture? Unity. So what is like the anointing oil? Unity. What is beautiful and delightful? Unity. So the third verse says this, this heavenly harmony. What is the heavenly harmony? Unity. unity. This heavenly harmony can be compared to the dew dropping down from the skies upon Mount Hermon refreshing the mountain slopes of Israel for this realm. Oh, Jesus is a sweet harmony. It says God will release his internal blessing there. This promise of life forever in the place of unity. It is a place where God commands his blessing. Did you hear what I said this morning? In the place of unity, one with God and one with each other. We did it last week. Come on, put your ones up. Somebody say one. One. Say it again. Say one. One. Say one, 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 one. When we come together as one with him and one with each other, it is an anointing. Anointing, An anointing is released and God commands his blessing. Anything God commands, how many know it's got to do what, it, what it's told to do? So God wants to bless you. He wants to bless the body of Christ. He wants to take you to another level, but he's just waiting for you to unite. That's like I'm holding the blessing in my right hand. And I'm telling you to get together and I'm releasing things to allow you to understand the importance of coming together. But I'm just waiting for you to actually obey. And if you obey, I'm going to bust you in the head with the blessing. But I'm just waiting for you to unite. How many things have been lost in communities of believers? How many things have been lost in families because we fail to unite? In Malachi, it says God hates divorce. What is divorce? Now, don't get me wrong. If you got a divorce, so be it. It's under the blood. But what I'm saying is God hates divorce. And what is divorce? It is division. It is a separating you from the covenant that you made. You made a covenant with God, with man, and you made a covenant with God. And so what God hates is division. He hates divorce. He hates separation. He wants you to be united with him. And he wants you united with each other. Somebody put the one up again. Say, as one. Ephesians 4 and 1 says this. Uh, As a matter of fact, let's skip right down. Yeah, Ephesians 4 and 1, Passion Translation says, As a prisoner of the Lord, this is Paul talking to the church at Ephesus. He says, I plead with you to walk in a way that is suitable to your high rank. Walk in a way given to you in your divine calling. Walk in tender humility and quiet patience. We could just stop right there and go home. (laughs) And that could be a word all by itself. Amen. How many need God to help you to walk in tender humility? Tell the truth and shame the devil. Come on. Father, just help me. How many of you need to learn to walk in quiet patience? Have you ever been impatient? Come on, talk to me. Wave at me. And you know when you're impatient, doesn't it show up in your mouth? When you're impatient, don't you start saying things you shouldn't say? Come on, just, just think about it. You, you at the, the, <clears throat> the McDonald's or whatever and you're waiting in line and, and the people behind the counter is taking so long. You get so impatient, so aggravated, so angry. You ain't cooking the food. You ain't preparing the food. And you got to wait five minutes and you already be like, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what. What? Does anybody work here? What is this? 
you start talking to people you don't know. All of a sudden, you're friends with the person behind you. You know what I'm saying? I know, girl. I know. They take so long. Are you the manager? You're the manager? He the manager. Because you took an extra five minutes to get your food. Microwave society. We want when we want when you you was able to get in your car, drive to so, a, a restaurant. Somebody else prepare your food. You pay for it. Go home and eat it. And you mad that they took an extra five minutes to give you your double quarter pounder with cheese. Somebody say, help us, Lord. Always demonstrate gentleness and generosity, generous love toward one another, especially, listen, I'm going to start again, tender humility, when I say this, just put each one, we're going to list one, ready, each one, so tender patience, put up one, I mean, excuse me, tender humility, quiet patience, there's number two, demonstrate gentleness, generous love toward one another, Especially to those who try your patience. <laughs> Be faithful to guard the sweet harmony of the Holy Spirit among you in the bonds of peace. That's five things that you ain't got. <laughs> if we don't teach nothing else this morning, put the file up. Just work on those five and I promise you, don't use it to slap nobody. Just... Realize, look at the five, look at, the, look at those five things. Come on. I got five things I need to work on. Tell the person next to you, say, I got five things. Say, he just started preaching. And I got five things I got to work on already. We all do. Amen. Why is this important? Because these five things, if we don't allow, really, these are just the fruits of the spirit. Amen. If we don't allow these five things to manifest in our life, we have already begun to cause a division between me and somebody else. It's easy to do these five things in a room by yourself. If you're in a room by yourself, you are the most patient person in the room. If you're in a room by yourself, you are the most generous person in the room. If you're in the room by yourself, you are the most humble person in the room. It is when I begin to introduce other people to the room that you begin to realize, I don't like this joker. I'm trying everything I can. I just don't like him. When they talk, something happens. I get this feeling in my back. It go up my back and sit on my shoulder. I don't know what it is. It's probably their voice. But how many know? It ain't their voice. It's you. It's not the devil. It's you. Huh? Now the devil might lie to you about them. And you prone to believe it because how you feel about them. Talked about it last week. It is out of the abundance of your heart does your mouth begin to speak. I explained to you last week that the only living thing on earth that has the ability to speak is a human being. Other things communicate, but we are the only ones that speak an actual language. Why? Because the word of God says that we are made in his image and his likeness. In other words, we are made a speaking spirit just like the first. Therefore, whatever you say manifests. Jesus said, you shall have whatsoever you say. Say it with me. Say, I will have Whatever I say, them five things that I'm working on, again, it 
it, it will manifest in my relationship with other people. What happens in relationships is people say things you don't like. People do things you don't like. And without realizing it, you create a case against those individuals. And then because of that case, it gets down in your heart. And what is in your heart is going to come out your mouth. We learned last week in James that one single word is like a spark that starts a wildfire. James said you can tame everything, but you can't tame your tongue. And if you are wise enough to tame your tongue, you can you can tame every other area of your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, if you begin to say what God says about you, your family, the individuals that God has called you to, you come in agreement with him. You become one with him. And what you're doing is creating God's reality over their life. Oh, no, 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 no. You didn't hear what I just said. If you agree with the spirit of the Lord, hear what God says about the situation, the individuals. You come in agreement with what God says about the person and the situation. And you begin to speak what God says. You create God realities over the situation and over that person's life. If you don't agree with God and come in line with what he said, now you are agreeing with only one other individual. The accuser of the brethren. Who is the accuser of the brethren? Come on, talk to me this morning. The devil. How many know God sees you a particular way? And the devil sees you an entirely different way. If I agree with what he says, I talked about it last week. I am literally opening the door for him to steal, kill, and destroy you. You are speaking life over yourself. Why do you think we call it cursing? Mm. When you was little, you say bad words. I don't say bad words. How many has cussed somebody out before? Stop lying. Raise your hand if you cuss somebody out before. Okay. Some of y'all got two hands up. Okay. <laughs> Praise God. I did it twice in one day. <laughs> Come on. Raise your hand if you cuss somebody out. You do know it's not cuss. C-U-S-S. It's curse. When you curse or cuss somebody out, you are speaking curses over them. Oh, my God. You some of the sucker, kiss my blankety blank with your old stinking cell. You know what? Take my foot and I'll put it in your rubity poop poop. And you know what else? Oh, you would just think of this thing. Cell. Wait, hold on. Time out. What am I saying? Who am I agreeing with? I just called this person a some of the sucker. Is that who God says they are? Come on, see, stop bleeding. You better stop being cute in here. Tell the truth. Some of y'all going to be cussing when you leave here. I never do that. <laughs> pastor, kiss my... I, <laughs> I would never do that, Pastor. He think he cute with his always talking junk. So Raise your hand if you ever cuss somebody out. Let me help you out. Come on. Yes, that's what we do here. We tell the truth at Redeeming Word. And we deal with life. Come on, raise your hand if you ever cuss somebody out. Don't be ashamed. You cussed somebody out this week. You did. Send me your last 25 texts. I promise you, I can find a place where you have agreed with the accuser of the brethren. It's easy. 
It's real manipulative. Without realizing it, you start saying what the devil has said. Look at the person next to you and ask him, say, whose side are you really on? Mm. Be faithful to guard the sweet harmony of the Holy Spirit. Who brings us together as one? His Holy Spirit. We talk about it. We're all different. We all think different. We all come from different backgrounds. You know how hard it is for two people to get married? I got to pick up your dirty socks. I got to cook for you all the time. I got to wash your car. I got to take care of your kids. I do a lot for my wife. I mean... Holy Spirit is who brings us together. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You ever look at somebody and you're like, what in the world was I thinking? I don't like this person. Come on, man. But then the Holy Spirit remind you, that's because you're stupid right now. You own stupid right now. Don't say that out loud. Come. If you say that, you might get what you're asking for. Shh. Do you know Holy Spirit is more personal than we actually understand? He be helping you, man. He be like, whoa, 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 whoa. Calm down. Calm down, shorty. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. You don't got your britches is too big for you. You're going to mess up. Hey, 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 now. Better shut your mouth. Wrench around and go sit down on the couch somewhere. And all the men said, call your wife and say you're sorry before you be single. And all the men said, Get up and go give your husband a kiss. For <laughs> I ain't kissing that joker. Get up right now and go give your husband a kiss. I'm not kissing him. That's the kind of conversations Holy Spirit have with us. Something told me to get up and go. Something to no, Holy Spirit told you get up. Stop being selfish, stop being angry, stop being self-centered, and go unite with the one you are in covenant with. Don't be ignorant of the devil's devices. He's a strategist. Please understand, you are but a wisp in a fog. He's seen a whole lot of you. Oh, you didn't hear what I just said. He's sitting down, writing out every detail, for lack of better words, of how mankind acts. He knows you. He doesn't care what you say you're going to do or you're not going to do. He's seen many of you before, and many of you said you wouldn't do this, you wouldn't do that, and then you end up exactly where he has directed you to be, and you've opened the door to the enemy and given him a foothold to your family and your life. And that foothold lasts generation after generation after generation because you couldn't get over yourself. <laughs> Ephesians 4 and 11. We're going to jump all the way down to Ephesians 4 and 11. Actually, let's go to Ephesians 4 and 7. It says, God generously has given each one of us a supernatural grace according to the size of the gift of Christ. Let's jump down to Ephesians 4 and 11. And it says, he has appointed some with the grace to be apostles and some with the grace to be prophets and some with the grace to be evangelists and some with the grace of being pastors and some with the grace of being teachers. Listen, and their calling, the calling of the apostle, the calling of the preacher, the teacher, the pastor, the evangelist, and their calling is to nurture and prepare 
all of the believers to do their own works of ministry as they do, they will enlarge and build up the body of Christ. These grace ministries will function until we attain oneness. Wait, 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 wait. Did you hear what I just said? The fivefold ministry has one job. The job of the fivefold ministry ain't to get you to serve us, to get you to, you know, hold our bag, ain't to get you to exalt us as king. Our job is to utilize the grace of God to help you develop into oneness. John 17 and 21, Jesus says, Father, make them when they become one, remember what Psalm says, there's an anointing release that God commands the blessing there. Jesus says it, he prays it out, Lord, make them one. And he says, when they become one, the entire world will know that I am truly your son. The whole world is waiting for you and your wife to come together. The whole earth, we said it, is upside down in travail waiting for us to become my job up here, I can preach a whole lot of stuff. We can run around the room, act crazy. God going to give you double for your drop out. <laughs> you drop down, get back up. But if you're not one with your wife, guess what? I failed in my job. Mm, come on, come on. These grace ministries will function until we attain oneness and faith. Until we all experience the fullness of what it means to be no, excuse me, what it means to know the son of God. And finally, somebody say finally, become one perfect man with the full dimensions of spiritual maturity and fully develop in the abundance of Christ. Could it be that there are things that God wants to release to me? He wants to command the blessing to me, but he can't release it to me because I won't become one. We're praying for revival. We're, we're interceding for this. We have different meetings and stuff like that. We cry and we snivel. Malachi, God says, you cry and you snivel at my altar. And the reason I'm not doing nothing you ask me for is because I see how you treat the wife of your youth. Oh. So there's things that you're praying and asking God for. He can't release to you because you won't become one with the one you're in covenant with. You're not only in covenant with your wife, but this is a covenant community of believers. Huh, wait, you, did you know that? Do you know that we are all in covenant with one another? Do you know that we, if we, we can't break the covenant that we've made with God and each other to be one body with one vision, one calling, serving one mighty God? Look around the room. Look around the room. Just choose anybody. Point at them and say, I'm in covenant with you. Just point at anybody else. Say, I'm in covenant with you. Point at anybody saying, we in this together. And the plan of the enemy is to divide and conquer. My job is to bring us together. To teach you the word of God so that you become one with God and you become one with one another. Amen. I dare you to grab somebody's hand. Just grab the hand. Oneness has always been the goal. Huh? One can put a thousand, but two can put what? I, we say it all the time, but you gotta get a revelation. There's more than two of y'all up in here. If they said to the disciples, it was only 12 of them jokers. What they said was, these are the men that turned the whole world upside down. How many of us in here, if we get together with one vision, one mind, you can turn the entire world upside down. Change governmental processes. Change the economic system in your... What? What? 
Do you know it was one man's idea that God gave him that created the Red Cross? A, a, something that has affected the entire world. You know, one man sought God and they, or a man or a woman, I don't know if it was a man or a woman, but one, one or it might have been a woman that made the Red Cross, I don't know, but a person, one person <laughs> got the idea to make the Salvation Army and it affected the whole world. Are you hearing what I'm saying? One person created the YMCA and it's all over the world. Do you know that inside of you is one idea that can bring reformation and change to the entire world? All you got to do is become one with Holy Spirit and become one with each other. That's a good place to give God a hand clap. Go ahead. That's my job. Ephesians 4 and 14 says, and then, somebody say, and then. And then. Somebody say, and not until then. And then. and then, when we become one, it says the immaturity will end. And we will not be easily shaken by trouble. Hmm. Nor led astray by novel teachings or by false doctrines of deceivers. See, when we're focused on ourselves and we're not concerned about the ministry of what God has called us to do or focused on, you know, the community of believers or the vision for that God has given a, a particular community of believers or a vision that God has given your family. If the husband is more concerned about himself and not focused on the vision for his family, guess what? He'll be looking for all kind of teaching and self-help stuff he can figure out to cause him to go to another level while his wife is left in the dust. Mm. There is an epidemic right now where women are realizing that they have the right to have more than what their husbands thought they can have. They're beginning to educate themselves, go back and get their degrees and all type of stuff. And then when they get that degree, they turn around and look at you with your old bald head fat self. And guess what? They saying, peace out, dude. Tell the truth and shame the devil. <laughs> it's happening. Why? Because somewhere along the line, these two individuals that were in covenant with each other, they were more concerned about themselves than the you. That's what we do. And that's what we do in the body of Christ as well. We try to find every prophet and teacher that's teaching what you want. I really got a call in for deliverance on my life. I need to go somewhere where they are dealing with deliverance every day. Deliver, deliver, deliver. I got a prophetic gift. I know that God is using me prophetically. Therefore, I must find a prophetic pastor. Oh, yeah. I mean, um, uh-huh. Go ahead. and tell, Don't be trying to act like you don't know what I'm talking about. Huh? That, that word over there is too elementary. I got the deep things that God is pushing me out in and therefore I must find someone who's deeper. Peace out. Looking for what suits your fancy. But meanwhile, your family is jacked up. Looking for what suits your fancy. Meanwhile, your finances is jacked up. Self-esteem jacked up. Sick in your body. Mm. Somebody say help us. Mm. You're immature. You're immature. I said you're immature. You are a babe in Christ. You've been saved, sanctified for 30 years, and you still a babe in Christ. Because as soon as you don't hear what you want to hear, how you want to hear it, when you want to hear it, you leave. Mm. And we do it in our families, too. We do it in our relationships as well. Where is the stick to itiveness? 
Where is the strength? How many know maybe you don't need it, but maybe somebody else do? And if you're more concerned about what you want rather than what God is doing, you'll miss the whole thing, abort your own purpose because you later down the line was going to be raised up to do mighty things where God has you, but it was uncomfortable right now, so you got up out of there. And you missed your purpose and calling. How many know in my marriage with my wife, we've been together for what, 28 years maybe? She's scared what I'm going to say. She's like, yeah, I guess. How many know that my marriage with my wife is not always peaches and roses and, and you know. In 28 years, we didn't have some arguments. Amen. Why are y'all looking at me like, what? Uh, yeah. We argue. How many know in 28 years, we felt like calling it quit sometime? Huh? How many know in 28 years, I done changed, she done changed, and we like, how many know when you meet at 18, 19, what you want at 18 and 19, now I'm 48. How many know that change sometimes? But the key is not what I want, what she want, what I like, what she don't like. How many know the key is the covenant that we have with each other and what God has called us both to, that supersedes everything. And because of our union, guess what we have? We have some seeds. Oh, you're not here. See, we have some children. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There is a direct uh, 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 produce, for lack of better words, that comes from our union. See, when we come together as a community of believers in covenant with one another, how many know we bear fruit? And you can't be so concerned about yourself. Just be a tree planted behind, behind, by the water because people are coming that want to be able to eat the low-hanging fruit from your life. Maybe you got to tough it out right now. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But on the, what does the word of God say? It says, do not give up and cave in. Why? Because in due season... Look at somebody and say, due season. You know why it says due season? It's the season that was due to you. It was already due to you. Yes, you shouldn't have to go through this, but there's a season that was already due to you. But just chill because it's going to come back around again and you're going to reap a harvest. It doesn't say you're going to reap a seed. It said you're going to reap a harvest. It doesn't say you're going to get something. It says a harvest. No one can dictate what your harvest should or shouldn't be. God dictates that. You can plant one seed. You can plant a seed of togetherness. You can plant the seed of unity. You can plant the seed of finances. You don't know how much you're going to get back, but God is the one that will multiply the seed based upon your obedience. Somebody say, as one. See, this is my job, to teach you to stay united, to teach you to not give up and cave in. It doesn't matter what it feels like. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Keep on fighting. Look at the person next to you and say, keep on fighting. Look at the person on the other side and say, keep on fighting. What are you fighting for? Fight for unity. Fight for oneness. Don't be ignorant of the devil's devices. He's trying to get you by yourself so he can defeat you. That's right, Donnello. <laughs> Boy, I tell you what. If I ever had a doubt in my mind, if I was preaching good or not, I thank God for this woman right here. You understand what I'm saying? I know if I'm preaching good if Donnello, oh, yes, sir. I'll be like, thank you, Jesus. I don't care what none of y'all say at the service. Y'all be like, Pastor, that was a good word. Now, where's Donella? <laughs> Can y'all give it up for Sister Donella? <laughs> this is God's desire. Pe Listen, community of believers, redeeming word. Listen to me. Jesus prayed this. Lord, make them one. Do you know how important that is? 
Jesus prayed it. Make them one. Grab your wife hand. Some of y'all ain't even paying it. You ain't obedient to that. Grab your wife hand right now. Grab your children hand right now. Grab your brother and sister in the Lord. Grab their hand right now. Man, do you know how petrified the devil is of this? Huh? We got that thing I told you to put on, Joe. Yeah. Ephesians 4 and 29 says, watch the way you talk. Watch your mouth, Joker. Turn it up. See you right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Huh? What? What'd you say? Huh? What'd you say? Huh? What? Huh? Huh? Marie, what you say? Huh? What? I don't know what nobody. I can't. What? What you say? Huh? All right, turn it down. You know good and well. I couldn't hear what none of y'all was saying. Do you know why? Because we're at war. Bullets whizzing past my head. I got my weapon. I'm shooting it and utilizing it. I'm dressed for warfare. Bullets, bullets and, and guns and stuff is going off. Bombs and stuff. I don't, it don't even matter what you got to say. You're supposed to be fighting. What does it matter what I have opinion that I have and we're at war? What does it matter? We're in the foxhole with each other and you ain't took a bath in a week. You think I'm concerned about how you smell or I hope you don't die. Wait, 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 wait. It's twofold. I hope you don't die because I'm concerned about you. But I hope you don't die because I need some help. So you mean I'm going to turn around to the person who has my back and fighting with me and start talking junk about him? Look at your little dirty cell. Why you had to growl through the mud like that? Smell like all get out. Good. Have you taken a bath in a week? No, 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 no. Hey, keep shooting. Keep shooting. Keep, no, no, no. <laughs> keep shooting. Throw a grenade. Do another grenade. We can do this. We're together. Don't give up. I don't care where you're from, what you look like. I don't, it doesn't matter. Let's keep fighting. Don't give up. We can win. We're together in this. I'm encouraging you. You encourage me. Look at the person next to you and say, we can do this. Say, we can do it together. Uh, listen, that's the only way it will ever work. You were supposed to do it together. Oneness was the plan from the beginning. One with God and one with your brother and sister. Somebody give God praise for that. Stand to your feet. Talked about it last week. Jesus said, he said, any kingdom that fights against itself, just get, get a revelation of this. Any kingdom that fights against itself will end up in ruin. And any family or community that is splintered by strife will fall apart. That's the word of the Lord, that's Jesus. You are doomed if you can't come together. You can pray till you blue in the face. If you don't want to unite with the people that God has you in covenant with, you cannot win. You are already destroyed. Jesus himself said, you're fighting against yourself. Talking against yourself. 
I don't know about redeeming word. Are you a part of redeeming word? Then you're talking about you. Oh, you're separate from redeeming word. Well, if you're separate from redeeming word and you ain't got no. <laughs> what you doing here then? Oh, you separate from your wife? Because she always. Wait, you're in covenant. You're one. And every time you open your mouth about yourself or her, you're talking about you. Oh, you're making accusations against yourself. Any family, any community, any kingdom divided within itself will fall to ruin. Won't happen at redeeming word. Won't won't happen in your family. Come on with a round of applause. You make that declaration. Come on. Not in my marriage. Come on, come on. Not in my family. Come on, come on, redeeming word. Come on, keep it clapping going. Come on. He goes on to say, the first thing you need to do to win or to enter into a house, to enter in a community, you need to first bind up the strong man. Nobody breaks into a house and a strong man is sitting on the porch. Nobody breaks into a house where a man has a shotgun on his porch. And if you do, you're going to have to fool the strong man, tie him up, and then you can get in and still kill and destroy. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So what the enemy has done is he's made a call to you and asked you, hey, Will you join in with me in tying up the strong man? You say, sure. I'll tie up the strong man in my house. I'll speak against my husband. Sure. Sure, I'll speak against my wife. Oh, sure, I'll join with you, enemy, and tie up the strong man in the community of believers. I'll speak against the pastor and the leadership of the church. Sure, I will. Come on in and steal, kill, and destroy from us. Don't join with the devil. Watch now. The next scripture, Jesus says, Matthew 12 and 30, he says this. He asked you, so join with me. Here's Jesus saying, the enemy wants to tie up the strong man and come into your household. The enemy wants to overtake you, to get you to be divided to speak against your own self, to speak against your own unity. And then he says this, join with me. How many would, if Jesus stood up here right now in front of your face and said, join with me, how many would join with Jesus? Hey, this is what this scripture is saying. Come on, lift your hand up. He's asking you to join with him. That's what he's saying this morning. Join with me listen now then he say if you ain't on my side you against me and if you refuse to help me gather the spoils you are the one that's making things worse how many want to join with Jesus come on and lift your hands in this house of God it's not hypothetical this real deal God needs you to have the same mind of Christ, to put on the mind of Christ, the word of God says. Ephesians 5 and 1 tells me to mimic God. I have to be God-like in the earth. I'm not God, but my goal is to be like him so that people can see, just like John 17 and 21 says, that they'll see the love of God in me, through me, and they'll know that Jesus is real. My unity is the place where God commands the blessing, calls it a harmony. You know, the thing about a harmony, it's not unison. We're not asking people to be, be just united and be in unison. No, we're talking about harmony where every single person plays their right part in excellence. And when played together, it's a beautiful sound. I believe like Acts, there'll be a sound of a mighty rushing wind. And just like Acts 2 and 42, over 3,000 people got saved in one day. 
as redeeming word makes the sound that we're called to make in the earth realm I'm telling you there is going to be a sound that will go over the entire region and it will emanate from here and many will come crying what must I do to be saved how many believe that well at least a few of y'all do I said how many believe that glory to God well, once again, just lift your hands and ask God for you to play your part. To play your part in the harmony. Everybody got a different part. Just play your part in the harmony. And we'll make a beautiful sound. An eternal sound. That will be a blessing to everyone that hears it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you are calling us to an entirely different level. God, I thank you that you are increasing us, causing us to increase in understanding and revelation. You're increasing us in the form of provision, increasing our love, calling us to another realm as it pertains to our love walk, God. Thank you for the peace of God that abides in and with us so much so that we don't even understand it. Thank you that you're knitting hearts together. You're causing us to come together as one. I rebuke the devourer. I rebuke the lies of the accuser of the brethren. The word of God says that they overcome in revelation by the blood of the lamb and the words of their own testimony. It says that they did not love their own lives, that they came together. And I thank you, God, that as we come together as one, that the word of our testimony about our brother and sister, that the words of our prophetic testimony about this community of believers, that we're saying what you say in the earth realm, joining with heaven, saying what heaven says about situation, circumstances about redeeming word about our families and we'll become one